the ordinary annuity formula. In this video, I'm going to show how this formula, this closed form formula, is derived. And the formula itself is F equals PMT times parentheses, then the quantity 1 plus R over N to the N times T power, minus 1, close the parentheses, and then divided by R over N. And this formula will tell you the amount of money that you would have in an account if you make regular payments into it for a certain amount of time. So the F, just to get this down here so everybody's on the same page, is the future value. It's how much will be in the account in the future. The PMT, this is the regular payment. So by regular, they mean that you're doing this consistently. So like if it's monthly payments, you're doing it every month. If it is weekly, you're doing it every week. And they're going to be equal payments. You know, if you're doing things maybe one month, then three months later, then two months after that, and the payments are not going to be the same, uh, you know, these these concepts, they, they don't work with this formula. <laughs> so it's only if the payments are the same and made consistently, you know, so just keep that in mind. The regular payment always has to be the same and, uh, you know, consistent. And the regular payment is made at the end of the period. So if you're doing this monthly, it's made at the end of the month. If you're doing it weekly, it's made at the end of the week. The R is your yearly interest rate, your annual interest rate. This will typically be given as a percent, but you need to convert it to decimal for the formula. But at any rate, it's the annual interest rate, you know, the stated rate. And then the N is the number of compoundings. Per year. So if you're doing this monthly, N would be 12. You know, weekly, N is 52, etc. And then T is just the number of years. So looking at the formula, the thing I want you to understand before we move forward is you look at this and you see this 1 plus R over N to the NT power. That's basically the compound interest formula. You know, it's, it's in there. So compound interest is a big part of this annuity formula moving forward. And we're going to see that coming back when I start developing the way to get to this formula in this nice closed compact form versus having to do it as a geometric series, which is technically what this is based on. So let's keep that in mind. Compound interest is a big part of this formula. And in order to make the math of what I'm about to show you work out nicely, I need to make a couple of substitutions here. Nothing too crazy, but I'm going to let the I equal R over N. And essentially what this is going to do is just let I be the periodic rate. If I can spell periodic. <laughs> Always debatable. All right, so that's your periodic rate. And that just means that if they give you a yearly rate, an annual rate, you need to divide it by the number of compoundings in order to get the actual rate per period. So, you know, if you're doing monthly and they tell you it's, you know, 12% a year, you're really only earning 1% a month in compound interest. So, you know, just keep that in mind. And then the X, I'm going to let this equal N times T. And this will be the total compoundings, the total compounding periods. And making this substitution, we will have F equals payment times 1 plus I to the X power minus 1 all over I. So it just makes things a little nicer mathematically moving forward and simplifies the formula a little. But uh, again, I was just your periodic rate, the N times T getting replaced by X 
and that X is now going to be the total number of compounding periods. So the way this works, you know, you're putting payments in, those payments are earning some interest. The next payment technically will earn a little less interest because it's in there for a little less time. The payment after that earns a little less interest. So let's look at a scenario that only has five periods in it, five compounding periods, but it'll build up what I need to show you for the general case because eventually I want to get to X, not just five, but I'm going to start out with just a smaller example and then we'll build it up so we have these and then remember the payments are made at the end of the period so in that first period it's made here second period it would be made here third period it's made here fourth one it's made here and then the fifth one here so at the end of those periods is when this is made and if i want to find the future value for the entire sum of those five payments earning compound interest I can set this up doing the payment times 1 plus I Remember, we're using compound interest here so 1 plus I it's got to be raised to some sort of power though you know with compound interest you always raise that 1 plus the rate to a power so I'm gonna look here at the payment the first payment and it actually collects one two three four periods worth of interest. So the power here is just going to be four. And then the second payment still has the one plus I. Let's figure out the power. So coming up here, we would have one, two, three periods worth that it has earned. And then the next payment, it will earn, let's see how many, you might be seeing a pattern here. And this third payment, it's going to have one, two periods worth of interest collected. The third payment, or fourth payment, sorry, we're getting down the line here now. The fourth payment, it's only going to earn one period worth of interest. And then last but not least, a fifth payment, since it was made at the end, it hasn't collected anything. It doesn't collect anything. It's just the payment. And if you were to add all these together, you would get the future value. So the reason I did this with the smaller case is to point out one important fact. If we go out to five periods, notice that we only have a power of four as the highest power for that earliest payment. Key aspect is that it is one less than the number of total periods. That's going to be true for no matter what number you plug in, whether it's 10 periods, 100 periods, it's always going to be one less. So if we go to the general case, I want to build this up for X, not just five. We would have the zero here, the one here, the two here. I'll go three and then we'll skip a bunch and get out to this hypothetical X and put in these things here and we're still making the payments at the end of the periods so payment here payment here payment here and then that last payment and now the future value for this setting up a series you know technically a geometric series expansion we will have the future value equal to the payment times one plus i this is the earliest payment, the first payment. We always do one less than the total number of periods. So there were X periods. So we'll have X minus one as the power. And then plus the next payment would be times one plus I to the X minus two power. You know, one less than what we started there. You know, we did decrease. If we look up here at the numbers, four, three, two, one, and nothing. So we'll decrease here by one. And then I'm going to go out a bunch because I know I'll run out of space if I don't. So we're going to skip a bunch and we'll get to the second to last payment where it only earns one month worth of interest or one period worth. It may not necessarily be months. And then we'll get to this last payment that doesn't earn anything interest wise. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do here, it's a mathematical trick and it's a very useful trick that's going to allow us to get to the closed form. Because right now I have this expansion. Technically, it's a geometric expansion, uh, series expansion. And 
I'd have to add them all up by hand. You know, if I got a hundred here, I'm adding up all those different terms. Tedious, <laughs> to say the least. So the thing I'm going to do here to get to our formula is I'm going to multiply both sides by one plus I. And we'll see why we are doing this. So I'm going to get a second equation where the left side is multiplied by one plus I and then the right side is multiplied by one plus I. And if you multiply 1 plus i times 1 plus i to the x minus 1, you will be adding powers. You know, when you multiply things together, you add the powers. So x minus 1 plus 1 more for that one I multiplied in would be x. You know, you just add 1 to it, so you get an x. The next one, you add 1 to that, you're going to have 1 plus i to the x minus 1 power. And then you go out all the way until you get down here. And the second to last one now will have 1 plus i squared. You know, 1 plus 1 is 2. And then the last payment now actually has a 1 plus i multiplied by it. And you might be asking, why? Why are you doing this, Marcus? <laughs> what is the point? Well, a mathematical fact is that if you have two equations, you can subtract the left side, subtract the right sides, and you'll get another equation that is true. For example, if 3 equals 3 and 2 equals 2, you do 3 minus 2 on the left, you get 1. You do 3 minus 2 on the right, you get 1. You get 1 equals 1. It's still true. So with this mathematical fact, I'm going to let this be the first equation, this be the second equation, and I'm going to do the second equation minus the first equation and get another equation that is true. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to get rid of a lot of these terms here and make a nice closed form for the future value. So we would have f times 1 plus i minus f on the left side. And on the right side, notice what's happening here. This first payment, you know, it won't subtract with anything, but the second payment, it matches this one right here. So these two actually cancel each other out when you subtract. There's another payment right here times something that would be the same as this one. It'll cancel out. You get down to the end. There's one right here before this, uh, you know, second to last payment that will actually match up with this one. So these will cancel out. The last one here on the second equation cancels out with this one. So all those terms that are in that series in between, you know, they're just going to be canceling out. And what we're going to be left with from the second equation, there was nothing that would cancel with payment times 1 plus i to the x power. That's still going to be there. And then that payment, that you know, last little payment there in the first equation, technically we subtracted it, so it would become a minus payment. And now we're really close. So we've gotten rid of all that expansion stuff, and I can just factor out an f on the left side and get 1 plus i minus 1. On the right side, I can factor out the payment and I'll get 1 plus i to the x power minus 1. Oh, it's starting to come together now if you look up a little bit <laughs> or back up the video. And 1 minus 1 in that left side there in the parentheses adds to 0. So we get f times i. I'm going to divide both sides by i and we are going to get payment times 1 plus i to the x power minus 1 all over i. And we're basically done. So if I just take the uh, i, replace it with r over n, the x, replace it with n times t, I get the formula for, oops, this should be an r over n now, sorry, the ordinary annuity. And you'll now be able to hopefully understand where this comes from. So again, just you know, replace i with r over n and x with n times t that we established in the beginning. So hopefully this helps make you understand where the formula comes from. And you know, if you want to look more into kind of the inner workings of you know where it really starts. You know, I used the concept of a geometric series and I used the compound interest. You know, using those two concepts 
allowed us to get to this final ordinary annuity formula, and I hope that helps you.